Welcome back everyone to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fire Trade for short. My name is Alex and I'm just going to go ahead and review the stock commodity bond and forex market. Um, I got to talk at a really really fast rate so please be, bear in mind that I have a very small amount of time to fit in all this mass amount of information in a short time. I'm going to give CNBC a run for its money today. So first of all, dollar index has had a minor pullback. Remember, you have this tail right here on the inverse hammer. Inverse hammer, basically at the very bottom of a trend. It's not really an inverse hammer. In fact, it's just a hammer at this point. Because an inverse hammer is a hammer on the bottom and the tail at the top. But this is a hammer. Hammers are pretty positive on the charts because first of all, on a day's trading session, it looks like this. It goes down a bit, then it's been able to recover a bit. And when the market has been able to recover after meeting the abyss, chances are it's going to go back up. Remember, around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. onwards is when the stock market has had a pretty strong pullback overall, especially in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite with the New York Stock Composite com combined. And uh, pretty much, this market has gone in the opposite direction of the stock market. And like I was pointing, early, pointing out earlier, what you're trying to look for is a reaction. It doesn't have to be an equal reaction. This isn't physics. You know, everything has an reaction, has an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> no, that's not how the stock market works, okay? You're just looking for a reaction, not an equal or opposite. Well, opposite reaction, but not an equal reaction. That's in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is the S&P 500. S&P 500 has had a bearish engulfing pattern on the chart. has been able to engulf the previous two candles, which is a very negative indication on the S&P 500 overall. Let's go ahead and review the key markets, which is going to be the, the sectors and the indexes. Major indexes, first of all, S&P 500 was down negative 1.01%. Dow Jones Industrial Average, negative 0.11%. NASDAQ Composite, negative 1.46%. New York Stock Exchange Composite, negative 1.05%. Uh, Russell 2000 negative 2.56 percent, S&P 400 mid cap negative 1.56 percent, and the S&P 600 small cap negative 2.2 percent. Overall, markets did perform bad. Dow Jones Industrial Average got the least amount of average. Main reason being, key stocks on the Dow component are still unable to report before the Dow Jones. Uh, so basically, a, a, a vast majority of the stocks on the Dow Jones Industrial Average haven't reported yet. So there's still some hype being built up in the Dow Jones, but everything everywhere else is not looking too uh, good because a lot of companies on S&P 500 have already reported their earnings. Okay, and another thing is companies like McDonald's on the Dow Jones Industrial Average have had a pretty good debut so far. Um, overall, I recommend you guys to stay away from McDonald's now at this point. I did recommend a call option position, but now is about the time to start selling those calls, getting out of the Dow, completely stay away from McDonald's. Um, I believe you would be at around a 40% profit at this point. That's how much I think I got right now. But I already got out of my position, and I recommend you guys get out of your McDonald's position as well, as far as calls are concerned. Let's go ahead and look at the previous chart, which is SPY ETF. Same story here. SPY pulls back a bit. And uh, pretty much SPY is just an ETF based on the S&P 500. So it's pretty much an index fund. And uh, this index fund pretty much goes from point A to point B, which is a bearish engulfing pattern. Let's go ahead and look at this part engulfs the two previous candles, which is a very negative indication of trend, which could indicate a pivot in the opposite direction. A pivot in the op opposite direction is very negative and is indicative of future negativity. That means that market sentiment has turned a bit sour, and it's about time you start protecting your portfolio by buying put options in the SPY. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the Forex gold market. Gold market, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower highs. All overall, Market weak, um, breaking below this upper lip of the channel. It's broken. It's broken the support level found in the mid midterm channel right here. It's broken it already. And chances are you're gonna find support on the midterm, uh, or not not the midterm, but the yearly bottom support level. That's where you're most likely gonna find some support at around 1,280. We've gone over this a numerous amount of times, but I just want to keep that in mind for you guys. Next trend line is all the way down to around 650, and I'm telling you guys, the likelihood of this going from point A to point Z is so, unlo uh, so unlikely that I wouldn't even want to consider it. Right now, to be realistic, 1,280 would be the highest likely or the highest most likely support level you're going to find. Let's look at the next chart, which is going to be the silver spot. Silver spot, I already built in the pyramid. Uh, this market is breaking below this trend line, this trend line. It has tried to find some support. Um, 
has found, has found some resistance on the 20 day moving average. It's already broken below the 50 day moving average, and the 100 day moving average is coinciding with one of our trend lines. The chances are your highest. The, you're most likely going to find support at around $25 for the high likelihood of around a 10 to 20 percent correction. Let's look back at the gold market. Gold market, same story here. Find, China finds some support on the 100-day moving average. Chances are it's going to break it, and if it breaks it, um, future negativity in the markets, and, and more than certain it's going to happen. So once it happens, don't be surprised. 1,280 will be your next target support level. Let's look at the next market, which is going to be the crude oil E-mini February 2011 futures. Uh, this market has gone up a bit. But, like I'm saying, chances are it's going to be a cup and handle pattern or it's going to be an inverse head and shoulder. Chances are this market is going to pull back even more. If it pulls back even more, chances are you're going to look at a market somewhere around $82 to around $84 on the crude oil market. Companies in the energy sector will um, have a negative reaction to that or a negative response. Remember, dollar index is going to is trying to find some support at this point and it's getting some good reasons to do so. Stock market pulls back. That in turn will cause the stock market to go upwards. Stock market goes upwards. That you know, stock market goes downwards, dollar index goes upwards, and likewise commodities follow suit and also go downwards as well. Let's go ahead and review the next chart, which is going to be the bond market. Bond market has been able to find some support right below the 20-day moving average. I believe that as long as the stock market continues this negative pullback, chances are the bond market will continue going a little higher, and 122 will be our next target, and after that will be 125. I don't see much more room in the bond market to go any further than 125 which is going to be right around the next area of uh, resistance that the 100-day moving average will follow or somewhere around there. 125 or 126 will be your target resistance area. But for right now, I anticipate the market breaking above 122 and going a bit northwards in the bond market as the stock market continues its negative pullback. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is JP Morgan and Chase. Negative short-term trend change angle. You have this negative uh, inverse uh, inverse hammer and uh, pretty much this negative inverse hammer is uh, pretty bad I don't find any po anything positive about it and as you guys can already see JP Morgan is continuing downwards and likely support level will be around $41 the next area will be around $40 overall great opportunity to buy some put options short the stock and if you already own the stock buy some put options protect your portfolio be a little speculative, earn some money in the short term so that the next time you find some support or you find the market, find an area that you might like to go ahead and buy back into, you have some extra money that you earn off of leveraged positions in the JP Morgan and Chase stock. Let's go ahead and look at the next stock, which is going to be Bank of America. Bank of America, same story. You got this market breaking below this major support level. Support level broken. Next area of support will be around $14, and the next area of support will be somewhere around $13 on 100-day moving average and $12.80 $12 for the 100-day moving average. Um, same story here. I recommend you guys to buy some put options, buy some protections, do very tight trailing stops in this market because chances are this market is going to have a pretty strong pullback. And I also mentioned that on the JP Morgan Chase. I mentioned this inverse hammer on s Sunday. And you guys have to be really close. And you guys got to really, really pay attention to these videos because they move with the markets. And the markets move very fast. And if you guys don't watch every single video, you guys are going to be left behind. So keep watching these videos. It helps a ton. It helps a lot, actually. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the NASDAQ QQQ, which is the PowerShare QQQ Trust Series, which is pretty much a technology ETF that follows tech names. And pretty much you have, an, uh, you have this engulfing pattern on the market. So pretty much technology stocks are going to get hit much harder than the rest of this industry because technology, financials, materials, and energy. Energy will be hit slightly, but the companies that are going to be harmed the most are the companies with the higher betas. Uh, every time you look at a stock, watch that beta because that beta moves determines how fast that stock moves in response to the indexes. Watch it very clear, clear, carefully and choose stocks with higher betas to short. That should be a key criteria. Companies like Bank of America and JP Morgan and Chase have really high betas. That's why they give they move so much more, which justifies you buying put or call options in the markets. But right now, put options are the way to go, at least in the financial sector. Next stock, Apple. Apple is moving all over the place. It goes up, it goes down. Honestly, I you know today's trading session was pretty bad for Apple because it went from point A to point Z. That's a bearish engulfing pattern right there. But it's not engulfing any previous candles, so you really can't call it a bearish engulfing pattern. But it's pretty. It's a it's a, a fat red stick, and a fat red stick tells you only two things. First of all, this market has gone up, it's gone down, and chances are the neg 
this market is going to keep going downwards. And uh, honestly, this is why I mentioned that you guys should buy some put options to protect your portfolio. Protection, protection, hedge, hedge, hedge. Because at this point, now if you're not, if you don't have any positions in Apple, and if you want to mess around with the Apple company, honestly, there are better places to short. But if you like Apple enough to short it, uh, go ahead and do it. Chances are the market sentiment is working in your favor at this point. And I did mention that the reversal was going to happen on around January 20. Today's January 19. So it's pretty close. I was off by a nick. I was off just by a nick, by a single day. But next time I'll try even harder to be on the same exact day. So I was only a day off. The market pulled back a day earlier. Maybe some industry expert watched this video or my video and said, Hey, let's sell the stocks a day before January 20 just so that we can get out in time but you know if they did that you know I honestly can't I can't, I can't talk smack to them I mean they were smart enough to do just just to be one step ahead of the um, consumers or the consumer traders basically I forgot what you call them but pretty much you know these these major uh, inter major um, major institutions most likely did most of the handiwork in pulling back this market a bit and chances are they're gonna pay out a heck of a lot less on call options that they went ahead and uh, sold to the markets so pretty much this is what I meant by market manipulation the market will have much more volume this week and remember every time there is more volume chances are it's gonna be a negative week let's go ahead and do a final review on volume zoom back a bit and as you can go ahead and see, I'm going to go ahead and look at the SPY. SPY, turn on the volume. And uh, pretty much the volume is pretty big. It's gone up quite a bit more. And this is just the beginning of it. Chances are we're going to go up to around 200 million, maybe on Thursday, maybe on Friday, if this market continues this negative trend and continues having as, as, as long as negative sentiment continues. That's all for today, guys. Please be sure to check out the trading software that I use. Check below or above this video for more um, for the training software that I use and please be sure to subscribe to the um, uh, to my YouTube channel and if you're on Facebook tell your friends about me I'd really appreciate it thanks a ton keep watching my videos keep getting smarter keep getting better thanks a bunch guys I appreciate it